Well, good afternoon and welcome back to the shop. Just a short little update video. The car is about 90% sanded. I stopped sanding because we've got a winter storm warning coming in, so we're gonna get a ton of snow tomorrow. And then of course, by Sunday, it's gonna be 12 degrees, and by Monday and Tuesday, it's gonna be 17 degrees Celsius, which is again, mid to high 60s. So this snow is just nothing more than a kick in the ass, and that's all it is. It's just for me to shovel my driveway for the last time, I hope. But I like those 16 degrees and 15 degrees days because I can open up the garage door when I'm using air tools, especially when sanding with air tools because it throws the dust up everywhere. It's nice to have the main doors open. I don't like doing this when the main doors are closed, so we'll just take a little bit of a moratorium on the sanding. But like I said, the body is about 90% sanded, just a little bit left on the nose. I haven't done the doors in the trunk or the hood yet. Those, again, beautiful day, I'll be outside, I'll be able to get the sand off of that, no problem. But two things we can work on while we're waiting are the hinges for the hood and the hinges for the doors. So before we get on to working on the hinges, and I'll show you why we have to rebuild this hinge, there's another thing I was working on, my brother's vehicle. And if you remember in my past videos, you're going to see a video about a 1969 Fairlane Cobra. Now this is a 428 Super Cobra Jet four gear car. It's a beautiful car, but it's suffering a problem that these older vehicles start running into. And that is the bushing that the clutch pedal pivots on. They wear out and they get sloppy. And the metal that this bushing is installed in is really thin. And the amount of pressure, and of course the number of times you press the clutch pedal, you not only create an oval, in the bushing you create an oval in the metal the metal actually starts to fatigue and pull away so this bushing starts to get sloppy in there and also the oval in there so it becomes even worse previous owners and this is going back 25 years had drilled the bushing and tried to put some screws in it to stop it from moving with inside of the bracket didn't help so what's it was progressively getting worse. It wouldn't have gotten any better, so we have to take care of it. So what would be the greatest thing to do? The greatest thing to do would be to remove the four bolts on the master cylinder, remove the couple of bolts that hold the steering column in the way, and pull the bracket out. Can't do it. His vehicle, there's three or four bolts at the front of it, which are all triangulated in. I can't get to those bolts. So what are we gonna do? Well, the best thing I could do is I created a template, and what that template did is it'll go up on the other side of the bracket and go right up against the hole where the bushing is. From that template, I created a 1 8 inch thick steel plate. And this steel plate is going to then be bolted onto the side of the bracket that the bushings go in. Now the good news, this is going to go on the outside of the bracket, which means the bushing usually comes from the inside out. And by going inside out, it's not going to inf interfere with the distance between the two bushings because it's going to be against the original metal. This is simply going to be on the outside and I made this really super tight. In fact, you got to wiggle it just the right way to get it in. So we made it so that this is now twice the thickness of the bracket metal. It's going to hold the bushing. And then all we need to do is take this, put it in place, I'm going to take a uh, piece of metal or I'm going to take the shaft that I have, which is a spare shaft, put it between the two bushings. And then once that aligns nicely, Mark, drill this and drill it and bolt it into the bracket. So this will be bolted against. I would have loved to remove the bracket and weld this in. Can't do it. Going to be bolted in. But like I said, three bolts holding this bracket in. And then of course, like I said, this bracket is huge. And the good news is, as I said, this comes on the outside, so it's not going to interfere with any of the sizing for the brake pedal that goes in the middle. But that's number one. So that's all built. Just got to get to my brother's. But as I mentioned before, we got a storm coming in. We got some nice weather next week. So we'll probably end up finishing it then. So the problem with the hinge that is on the door right now is it's only a half an inch, or sorry, it's only one and a half inches wide. But it's also got a huge diameter and that huge diameter when it's bolted to the side of the car and the door swings in and out that allows this to become a huge area for flex 
So this, when the door is on, you literally, I know I can't do it here, obviously, but when you put the door on this thing, you got a three foot lever on that and you press it, this whole thing bends. And if this can bend, that means it can't close properly. And if it can't close properly, it's going to damage the car. We have to stop that bending. Now, it would have been easier if I could have literally just put another one and a half inch beside it. But now this is down the center. I got to cut this all up, clean it all up. So how do you do that? I simply screw this into the table. I screw this into the table. And then when I cut this off, these will stay relative to each other. They're not going to move because they're screwed into the table. So I can cut this off, get a piece of steel, replace it, weld it. And since these haven't moved in relation to each other, the hinge will work, right? Because they haven't touched, I haven't touched it. What they've done here is this is a straight piece of steel. This is a straight piece of steel. They then welded it. This has been welded and dressed. They did a nice job, but it's, it's welded. You can probably see in the inside, there's welding in there. So my option is that if I take my three inch thick or three inch wide quarter inch steel plate, I can bend this on my press Nice thing the press will do, the press will make a nice bow, right? The press isn't going to make nice 90 degree angles. I don't have the technology for that, but I don't have to. As long as I can just get or create a piece that has got a nice little bow to it, which I can do with my press, these two flat pieces are then just welded to it and we create ourselves a new hinge. Now, I'm not going to go this elaborate. This doesn't have to be this big, but we'll weld it up. We'll create the three inch wide and that'll stop the door from flexing. So that's number one. Number two is this is one half, or so this is one inch wide, quarter inch steel. We're going to replace the hood hinges. And the problem with the hood hinges right now is they're just using rods. So steel rods that have been bent. Same look, you know, you've got the same thing. You've got the hinge under the hood, and then you've got the piece that bolts onto the hood, right? And that's kind of what it looks like right there. Same thing, smaller. Well, the problem is, is those rods are bent, and again, they become springy. And what happens is the hood's up and this hood can actually move left to right. And of course, if you want to go close that and you don't have it perfectly aligned, you're going to chip the paint. Just like when the door flexes, when you close it, you chip the paint. So that's it for the video. Just a quick update on the uh, bodywork. Uh, like I said, we're going to change those hinges. That's why I have them mounted the doors. Once those hinges have been replaced and they're solid, they're not going to move, then you align it all, you close the door, you make sure everything is the way you want it. And then I can do the bodywork with the body and the door in place because we want to make sure that that's flat as well, right? We don't want to work on a door separately from the body, right? You wouldn't do that with your car. You won't do that with this. We have to make sure the doors are on. We have to make sure the hood is on as well because we need to blend the hood. The only good news, as I said in the last video, is, is that the trunk has got that one inch thick wide steel bars on it. It's fantastic in the trunk, but again, so I don't have to worry about the trunk hinge, but we got the hood hinges we got to take care of. We got to take care of the uh, door hinges. So I'm going to probably work on that for the next few days because, again, we've got some terrible weather coming. I don't want to be sanding. So that's it. Just a quick update. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button. And I'll probably have something out in the middle of the next week where we finish sanding this car and we can actually start assembling it and working on the body. I'll see you then.